Aid the Public, Week 5 edition, this Sunday, October the 6th. I'm going to give you the five most public plays, the five most public sides for this Sunday's NFL action and let you know if we should fade them or play them. All five games coming up for you free here in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your Fade the Public video for this week, Week 5 of the NFL. And as always, we don't just blindly fade the public. We pick our spots. But in general, fading the public is a long-term winning strategy. If you're new to this video, first of all, welcome. And the concept here is we look at the most one-sided, publicly heavily bet sides in the NFL each week. And we decide if we should fade them or play them or maybe just pass. But I give you deep analysis for all the games as always. And we do have three very public plays here for Sunday. Also two additional leans, including your Sunday night game between the Cowboys and Steelers. I'll get to that in just a moment. First, though, let's do a quick recap. Fading the public has been fantastic so far this season. I got my notes here, and we're going to look at the record last week. Fading the top four official plays last week, we went 3-1. and one. The public went just 1-3. and three. So 3-1 and one at fading the official four plays last week. Bengals were the most public play last week against the Panthers. They covered, uh, but the other three, Texans, Steelers, and Rams, failed. So 3-1 and one fading the public last week. Now 8-4 and four this year, 67% after the first four week fading the public selections. Uh, the additional leans, we did give you three public dogs. The public actually went 2-1 and one on those. Uh, they failed with the Bills on Sunday night. They got blown out by the Ravens. By the way, I did have a strong best bet on the Ravens, and that was the one game I did use last week from the public fade the public video. I picked my spots. I use it as a filter. always like to let you know what I'm looking at. So overall this year, uh, the additional leans fading the public is 7-5. and five. So that's a combined 15-9 and nine fading the public in the first four weeks of this video, including 8-4, and four, 67% fading the official plays. We got three of them this week. Let's get right to them. Now, what I've been trying to do is give you the top two most public plays each week, uh, but we do have three of them this week. One of them is a little more public than the rest, and that's the Washington Commanders. Not my Washington Commanders. I don't know, man. They're starting to wear me back here. The uh, the future Redskin fan, i got to change that to future Commanders. got to be politically correct, but Close to getting back on the bandwagon. They're a pretty fun team to watch, and rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels is the real deal. I did a deep dive five-minute standalone video earlier this week on the Browns and Commanders game, so if you'd like to get my full analysis, that is available right here on Wager Talk TV. And I mentioned at the time I thought the Commanders were going to be one of the most public plays this week. Well, heading into the weekend, they are the most public play right now, and it's not a surprise. They've looked really good here, and they're an explosive offensive team. And as is often the case, it's not just the public backing the Commanders. They're fading the Browns here. Cleveland has looked horrendous offensively, and what a difference. They're averaging just 4.9 yards per pass on the road and just 4.1 yards per pass in all games this season. Meanwhile, rookie Jaden Daniels and the Commanders have been much better statistically, averaging over 8 yards per pass, almost 6.5 yards per play. Now, the problem is the Commanders can't stop anybody. Their defense has been atrocious. question becomes, though, can the Browns do anything about it? We'll see. My contrarian urge tells me this is the spot for Cleveland, but I'll be honest, I can't make a case for them. Um, at minus three or less, I think the commanders are probably the lean here. Uh, so I do not disagree with the public in this one, although it doesn't sit right with me. Uh, seems a little too obvious. And when a team is as bad as the commanders, the second worst team in the NFL last year is all of a sudden public in week five. Uh, definitely catches your attention. But once again, based on recent results... Uh, they probably deserve to be at least a three-point favorite. By the way, this line looks like it's hitting three and a half in some spots. If you like the Commanders, play it sooner than later at minus three. If you like the Browns, you definitely wait, as you should be able to find some plus three and a halves by kickoff on Sunday afternoon. Two more very public sides this Sunday, October the 6th, and I call both of these a tie for second, almost a tie with first as well. All three of these are very public this week. Uh, we'll start with the early game in London at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, Public is all over the Minnesota Vikings, minus the 2.5, and, and it's not a surprise. Minnesota's a perfect 4-0 straight up and against the spread. They've covered and won every game this season. Uh, meanwhile, the Jets did not look good last week, losing to the Broncos, just 2-2 two and two on the year. You know, they had that nice Sunday night, uh, Thursday night win, rather, against the Patriots a few weeks ago. And keep in mind, I didn't use it in the official video, but the Patriots were a public dog a couple Thursdays ago. I gave you a standalone free play winner on the Jets in that video. And, of course, this past Thursday... I did a Buccaneer Falcon video, gave it the Falcons there, and I mentioned the Tampa Bay Bucks were getting some public consensus. I don't count the Thursday night games. I only count the week, the Sunday and Monday games here. But once again, the Bucks and the Patriots, some recent Thursday night dogs, failed to cover. So that 15-9 and record really could be 17-9 when you include those. Um, but the Jets looked good on Thursday night. Did not look good last week, though, in their next game out. Losing outright is over a touchdown favorite, of course, against Denver. And their offense was really struggling. They put up just nine points. 
uh, just over 240 total yards. Um, this is a random game. You know, these London games, I very rarely get involved in them. It's an early 9.30 a.m. kickoff, by the way. Um, so a lot of uncertainty. And you got to look for a catalyst when fading hot teams like the Vikings. And you got to wonder if this travel overseas could be enough to cool off this Minnesota team. That's not only won four in a row to start the season, but they were a one-point favorite at the Giants and a dog in the last three games. This is a terrible technical setup off of three straight-up dog wins and now traveling to London. And, you know, when fading the public, we always want to have a quality team. And I'm not going to say the Jets are a great team, but they're not a bottom feeder. Uh, I do consider them a quality team still. Um, so this might be one of those situations where we can go contrarian and fade Minnesota. I would like to get three or more. We'll see where this line settles. Um, I do see Caesars dealing a three minus 120. Um, most other spots have two and a half. So once again, if you like Minnesota, grab the two and a half. If you like the Jets, plus threes might become available by Sunday morning. I think you can make some cases here where this is a good spot to fade Minnesota after the 4-0 start. All right, the other really public side this week is a late afternoon game at 425 Eastern Sunday afternoon, and that's the Seattle Seahawks minus 7 against the New York Giants. Um, hard for me to make a case for the Giants. Situationally, I would have liked this contrarian call here, maybe kind of looking for some reasons to fade Seattle. Uh, they were somewhat exposed last week, finally against the Lions on Monday Night Football. By the way, I had a perfect 3-0 sweep of the NFL last week as part of a 5-1 college and pro football week. And we finished it off with the over in that sub Monday night game between the Lions and Seahawks. Easy 71 total points. In fact, the Lions were just a couple about a score away from going over the total 47 on their own. Um, and they put up a lot of points in yardage. Um, but, you know, Seattle moved the ball pretty well also. And they're going to definitely be the better offensive team. And while... The Giants could be a little bit of a contrarian call here, just one and three straight up, plus seven. And also got to wonder if that Monday night game lingers. We just can't trust this Giants offense right now. They're a mediocre offense to start with. And now Malik Neighbors is out, the leading receiver in the NFL. And keep in mind, he was a first-round pick, number six overall L LSU. We see how good Jaden Daniels is looking as the number two pick. Malik Neighbors leaves the NFL in receptions, and he is out. The rest of the Giants receivers have done nothing this season. Daniel Jones is going to struggle. And it also looks like Devin Singletary, the Giants' leading rusher, who's doubtful, might not play. Uh, so their offense is already weak. They're going to be without their best rusher and receiver. Uh, not a good setup for uh, the New York Giants. So even though the contrarian call is New York here, hard to really make a case for them with such a limited offensive attack. As far as the total in this game, we did see the look ahead line a week ago. Um, as high as about 42-43, and it's holding about 42-43 still all across the board in different spots. We haven't seen much movement on the over-under. Um, maybe that's because Seattle looked really good offensively, bad defensively, uh, but the Giants are going to be really limited offensively, so this is a tough call, but the public does like the Seattle Seahawks minus seven. All right, those are your three official public plays here for week five in the NFL on Sunday, October the 6th. Washington Commanders minus three, Minnesota Vikings minus two and a half, and the Seattle Seahawks, minus seven. Going to give you two additional leans, including the Sunday night game between the Steelers and Cowboys in just a moment. Quick reminder, if you want my official best bets, as I mentioned last week, 3-0 sweep in the NFL, and we did fade the public in one of those games. Um, we don't just blindly fade the public. We pick our spots. We use it as a filter, one of the many filters I use when handicapping games, and it is a quite profitable filter long-term when you use it right. If you'd like my official NFL best bets, don't miss out. If you're getting this video on Saturday, there's still time for my Saturday night best bets. I have three college bas football, <laughs> basketball, we'll get to that in a moment. Three college football best bets all on the Saturday night card. So if you are joining us Saturday afternoon, you still have time there as well. And you never have to worry about missing best bets with the direct subscription. Right now, I am offering a 30-day football sampler for just $1.99 with promo code FBALL30. We also have a 7-day All Sports All Access sampler this week for $77. No promo code needed. And by the way, all sports is the way to go. I'm number one this season in college and pro football profit. Entered this week 20 and 11 start in the regular season. Number one at wagertalk.com, college and pro combined. And not a surprise, the last two seasons entering this year, number one ATS units one in college and pro football combined. Baseball regular season finished on a 31 and 13 best bet run. And the NBA, as I mentioned, basketball starts in a few weeks, starts with the NBA. Number one all time, including number one the last three years combined in NBA profit at wagertalk.com. And oh yeah, College Hoops was number one a couple years ago as well. I win consistently with the five sports I handicap. I am very selective. I average maybe one to two best bets during the week, three to four on Saturdays and Sundays, and it pays off. You know, just because I'm selective low volume 
Doesn't mean it hurts the profit. I just mentioned all those number one rankings, and those are units one, total profit at wagertalk.com. If you want to try a seven-day all sports, that'll get you baseball and basketball for the next seven days and nights. Just 77, special price. It's normally 99. It's just 77 this weekend. No promo code needed. If you want football only, get that 30-day football college and pro package for just 199. Promo code FBALL30. That's an instant $50 discount. But the best deal, the one I keep giving you each and every week, and many of you, I do many of you have gotten on board and you've been winning big. But some of you sit back and watch winter after winter pass you by. Over three weeks ago, I made the offer for an $800 discount on the one year all access. Went five and two in football that week. The very next week, five and two. Last week, five and one. That's 15 and five. 75% the last three weeks alone in college and pro football. Don't wait any longer. I'll bring it back. SM365. It's an instant $800 discount off the full year, one year, all access, all sports package. And that gets it down to just over $3 a day, just over a dollar a play. No excuse not to make money when it's just a dollar a play. And you can get that instant $800 discount with promo code SM365. But you got to use it on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash SM. Check out those daily free plays on my page as well. Hey, let's get to two additional liens on the way out here. Two public liens that weren't quite strong enough to be official fade the public plays. But once again, the liens have been profitable this year as well. And we'll start with the daytime game and then look at the Sunday night game for you. A daytime game goes at 1 o'clock Eastern. Public is on the Baltimore Ravens, minus 2.5, leaning towards the Ravens, minus the 2.5 points. And, you know, once again, I like to fade the public with quality teams. I think the Bengals are probably a quality team. Uh, they were 0-3 straight up. They're now 1-3 after beating the Panthers. Uh, public, by the way, was heavy on Cincy last week. A surprise they're looking to fade him here. Uh, but it's mainly because Baltimore looks so good on Sunday night football. This is a rare situation. The public was on the Bills, lost fading Baltimore, and they were on the Bengals and won. But now they're coming back with the Ravens and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I had a strong best bet last Sunday night. That was part of that 3-0 NFL sweep last week. As I mentioned, I faded the public with the Ravens, a 35-10 winner. But on the surface, this does not look like a good setup now. Keep in mind, they're coming off the narrow three-point win at Dallas. Sunday night win against Buffalo and now traveling to Cincinnati. And the Bengals have done this for several seasons now. They start slow, 0-2, 0-2, 0-3 this year. And then they turn it on. They've gone on some monster monster runs starting in October. We'll see if maybe this is the buy sign this week. Currently just 2.5. Would like to get plus 3 or more with Cincinnati. Uh, But with the public on Baltimore, this line could rise higher by Sunday afternoon. So keep it on the line. See if you can get plus 3 or more with Cincinnati as that would be the contrarian side in this game. And then finally, the Sunday night game. I did a standalone video for this earlier in the week, a deep dive five-minute analysis. So check out the Steelers and Cowboys deep dive Sunday night video. But I mentioned in this in the video earlier this week, the Cowboys were getting some public sentiment. Well, as I do my official numbers heading into the weekend, uh, the Cowboys are a public underdog in this game. So that's an additional public lean. Not super strong, but the public is definitely leaning towards the Cowboys. So ding, ding, or oh, ding and a half, red flag alert on Dallas is a public dog this week and an additional public lean, I would call this game. Uh, the Cowboys getting the plus three, uh, two and a half. And once again, public has skewed this line down a little bit. I think this line would have been three or higher normally if not for the fact Baltimore or Baltimore Pittsburgh lost outright last week as a road favorite at Indianapolis. But I really don't downgrade the Steelers much for that loss. In fact, uh, two weeks ago, the public was on the Chargers and the Steelers came, got with the win there in that game, obviously, at home by 10. And last week, the public then came in on Pittsburgh. And I mentioned in the video last week that I thought it was a bad scheduling spot for the Steelers after the home win against the Chargers. And Indianapolis was a little more of a dangerous team, maybe, than people giving them credit for. I think that was a flat spot. I think Pittsburgh will be more focused this week. And because of the loss and the fact that Dallas is always a very public team, this line is 2.5 instead of maybe 3 or higher. So it does look like there's some line value now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Cowboys, I really think, are down a notch this year. You know, that win against Cleveland in Week 1 is not impressive now in hindsight. And they've gone just 1-2 and two straight up, 0-2-1 oh, and one against the spread. They haven't covered any other game since Cleveland. And they've had 80 rushing yards or less now in three straight games. Steelers most definitely should have the edge here in the rushing game and on the line of scrimmage as they've had over 114 rushing yards or more in each of their four games this season. So once again, public dog lean on the Cowboys. I think this is a situation in which the line would have been higher otherwise. 
Hey, those are your five most public sides for this week. Three official public plays and also two additional leans for you. Hope you found the video useful. If you did, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Where do you agree with the public or disagree? Play or fade, right? We don't just fly, blindly fade the public, but we do use it as a filter. I gave you my takes on these five games. Where do you agree or disagree with the public this week? And what NFL best bets are you personally using? Hey, include some player props. We don't talk props much on this video, but once again, player props are always welcome. If you have some time, throw in some analysis as well. Let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. And don't forget, thumbs up like is goes a great way to keeping all these videos plentiful here on the channel. Thumbs up, like, boom, you did it. Thank you. And make sure you subscribe to Wager Talk TV and click the bell here when you do so so you get an instant alert when this Fade the Public video goes up each and every weekend. You also get an alert for my college football top 25 video and all the free play solo videos I do throughout the week for baseball, football, and soon coming up, basketball as well. Click that bell when you subscribe for instant alerts here on Wager Talk TV. And once again, on the way out, we got some special promos this week. Seven days for 77 All Sports. 30 days football for just $199, F-Ball 30, or the one-year all-access, all-sports, $800 discount with promo code SM365. Works out to just over a dollar a play. And why should you be on board? Well, I'm number one again this regular season, 20-11 and 11 starting college and pro football, 15-5 and five the last three weeks alone, 75%. 31 and 13 baseball run to finish the regular season. And my number one ranked all time NBA best bets start in just a couple weeks. Yeah, not a bad time to be on board. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. By the way, you don't have to memorize these promo codes or special offers. I post them all on my page. So go there, take your time, figure out which package works best for you. They're right below the daily best bets. The free play, I post a free play almost each and every day. Check out that bonus free play. And right below it are the promo codes and special offers for this week. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Follow me on social media as well, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L. At Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free betting content coming up next.